الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين ومن اتبع بحسن الى يوم الدين اما بعد to proceed to continue ولله الحمد our explanation of the book ثلاثه الاصول by a sheikh al imam muhammad ibn abdul wahhab rahimahullah so we mentioned therefore in our previous lesson the statement of the author bal arsala ilayna rasula rather he sent to us a messenger so we know therefore that allah azza wa jalla he sent to every nation a messenger an yabdullah wajtanib at-taghut commanding their people to worship allah and to avoid all the false deities all that which is worshiped besides allah and to this nation allah azza wa jalla sent muhammad ibn abdullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam as a rasul a messenger li to bayyana lahum ma nuzila ilayhim wa la'allahum yatafakkarun as allah azza wa jalla said in order to make it clear to mankind that which had been revealed to them thereafter the author he said fa man ata'ahu dakhala al-jannah therefore the one who is obedient to him will enter al jannah he will enter paradise so we understand therefore that the sending of the messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that obligates upon mankind his obedience i that we are obedient to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that is as we mentioned in our previous lessons with regards to three matters all that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said all that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam did and all that was done in his presence and he did not disapprove or reject that action so we have the great hadith of ibn mas'ud radiyallahu and where he said that jaa habr min al ahbar ila rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that a habr a jewish scholar from the scholars came to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said inna najid that indeed we find meaning in our scriptures and allah yaj'al as-samawati ala isba' that allah on yawm al-qiyamah will place as-samawat the heavens ala isba' upon a finger wal ardain ala isba' and the earth upon a finger وَالشَّجَرُ عَلَى إِسْبَعْ and the trees upon a finger وَالثَّرَ وَالْمَعَ عَلَى إِسْبَعْ and the uh, soil or the ground and the water upon a finger وَالصَّائِرِ الْخَلَائِقَ لَا إِسْبَعْ and the rest of creation upon a finger when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had that fadahika an nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam hatta badat nawajihu 
that he started to laugh until his molar teeth became visible, meaning the back uh, teeth. So he laughed to that extent. And Ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala and said, Tasdiqan li qawlihi, in affirmation of his statement. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam expressed his affirmation of the statement of the Jewish scholar by laughing to the extent that his molar teeth were visible. Then he recited the ayah in Surah Zumr. وَمَا قَدَرَ اللَّهُ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَدَّتُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ مَطْوِيَاتٌ بِيَمِينِهِ That they never performed a just estimate of the power of Allah Azza wa Jalla. وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَدَّتُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ and the earth in its entirety will be in his grasp on Yawm Al-Qiyamah وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ مَطْوِيَاتٌ بِيَمِينِ And the heavens will be folded by his right hand. سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى أَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ So, سُبْحَانَهُ How free and far removed he is from any deficiency and how lofty he is from that which they ascribe partners to him عَزَّ وَجَلَّ In this great hadith which has been mentioned in the Sahih of Al-Bukhari. Ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala narrates this incident of where he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tasdiqan liqawlihi he gave his affirmation for what the Jewish scholar had said which is from therefore the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that great hadith illustrates two points. One, that we're obligated to believe that from the Sunnah is that which he approved of with regards to something that happened in his presence, either the statement of the Jewish scholar, and second, that that is an incident with regards to matters of belief. It is from the matters of Aqeedah that a Muslim believes that Allah will take parts of his creation and place them upon a finger from his fingers and there is nothing like unto Allah so just as when the Prophet said in the hadith well known that you pray as you see me pray so that is from the Sunnah that Everything that the Prophet ﷺ, he did, whether it's regards to the prayer or the fast, then that is now obligatory upon the others to follow. So he said it clearly, that you pray as you see me pray. So we have the hadith of Ibn Umar and Nafi in Sahih al-Bukhari. That the Prophet وسلم, Ibn Umar, he saw him and he described his prayer. And he said, Kana idha dakhla fi salah kabbara. That when he entered into the prayer, he would say the takbir, thumma rafa yadayhi. Then he would raise his two hands. Wa idha raqa rafa yadayhi. And when he went into raku, he would raise his two hands. وَإِذَا قَالَ سَمِيَ اللَّهُ لِمَنْ حَمِدَ رَفَى يَدَيْهِ And when he said سَمِيَ اللَّهُ لِمَنْ حَمِدَ He would raise his hands. وَإِذَا قَامَ مِنَ الرَّقْعَتَيْنِ رَفَى يَدَيْهِ And when he would return back after the second tashahud, after completing two rak'at of the prayer, رَفَى يَدَيْهِ he would raise his hands, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that is an example of something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do. And we are obligated to follow his example because he said, Sallu kama yusalli. And similarly, the great hadith, the narration where uh, it was said that, لَمْ يَكُنَ النَّبِيُّ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَاهِشَ وَلَا متفاحشة. 
that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam was not fahisha. He did not do something that was immoral. Wala mutafahisha. Nor did he utter words that were immoral, something which is uh, unpleasant, or as we would say, a term of abuse. Walakin kana yaqulu, but he would say, inna min khirakum ahsanakum akhlaqan, that indeed from the best of you are those who are best in their character. So we're obligated to follow the character of the Prophet ﷺ because that is the best of example. So the point to note is that just as every statement, every action, and every tacit approval, everything that was done in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ is considered to be the Sunnah and therefore we're obligated to follow him, then similarly that relates to both matters of belief al ittiqad and of action. So we know therefore that the Prophet ﷺ said, Kul biyaminik wa sammillah that you eat with your right hand and you say bismillahi before you begin. We know that that's from the sunnah and that's an action that you perform. It's a statement upon your tongue. But similarly, all of the other ahadith relating to matters of belief are an obligation upon a Muslim to follow. That is why uh, the author, Al-Mu'allif, he said, Rahimahullah, فَمَنْ أَطَاعَهُ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ That the one who is obedient to him will enter Jannah. So the one who follows the example of the Prophet وسلم, with regards to matters of belief and action will enter into Al Jannah. Then Shaykh Muhammad bin Salih al Uthameen, rahimahullah, he mentions numerous ayat that affirm that principle. That the one who is obedient to Allah, meaning he adheres to his Sunnah then that person will enter into Al-Jannah like the ayah in Surah Ala Imran. وَأَطِيُوا اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So, uh, be obedient to Allah and our Rasul, the Messenger, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So that you may be dealt with in a merciful manner. وَسَارِئُوا So first, Allah Jalla said, that you're obligated to be obedient to Allah this messenger. Then Allah Azza wa Jalla said, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ Then سَارِعُوا hasten, go forward to the mercy, uh, the forgiveness of your Lord وَجَنَّةٍ and a garden. أَرْضُهُ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ whose expense is the distance of the heavens and the earth وَدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ and it has been prepared for Al-Muttaqeen, the people of At-Taqwa. So consider the connection, therefore, of obedience to Allah and His Messenger, and then that is your means of hastening towards Jannah. So Jannah and all that it contains from its blessing and tranquility and its vastness, that cannot be obtained except through obedience to Allah Azza wa Jalla and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is why Allah Azza wa Jalla, He said in Surah An-Nisa, وَمَنْ يُتِي اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ عَنَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَئِكَ رَفِيقًا That the one who is obedient to Allah and to our Rasul, the Messenger, فَأُولَئِكَ Then those people those are the people, they will be with the ones who Allah has placed His blessing upon. From the Prophets. And the truthful. And the martyrs. And the righteous. And how excellent are those people are as companions. So here Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned the most excellent. 
and the best of his creation from the prophets, the messengers, from the martyrs, the righteous and the truthful that those are the ones who are the dwellers, the occupants of Jannah and the one who adheres to Allah and his messenger وسلم, then they will follow their way and their path towards Al Jannah Similarly, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, وَمَن يُتِي اللَّهُ وَالرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزٌ عَذِيمًا And the one who is obedient to Allah and His Messenger, فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزٌ عَذِيمًا Then that is a person who has obtained the greatest of success. And in reality, there are numerous ayat in which Allah Azza wa Jalla affirmed this principle that obedience to Allah and obedience to His Messenger وسلم, that is the only means of entering into Al Jannah. And from the Sunnah, we have the Hadith where the Messenger وسلم, said, "Kull ummati yadkhalun al Jannah, illa man abba." That all of my ummah will enter into Al Jannah illa man abba except those who refuse. So it was said, قيل يا رسول الله ومن يأبى It was said, O Messenger of Allah, and who would refuse to enter into Jannah? And he said, من أطاعني دخل Al Jannah That the one who is obedient to me will enter into Jannah وَمَنْ أَصَانِي دَخَلَ النَّارِ And the one who is disobedient to me will enter into the fire. So the first principle therefore was after the sending of the Prophet وسلم, is the obligation to adhere to his sunnah and we explain what that means and that the one who does that will enter دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ will enter into paradise. But the one who disobeys the Prophet وسلم, then he will enter Anar the fire. So disobedience to the Prophet وسلم, is of two types. The first is the one who turned away. The first is the one who rejected that the Prophet وسلم, was a messenger from Allah. So he did not follow his way. Rather, he rejected it and he followed other than that which the Prophet ﷺ had introduced. The second type of rejection is the one who enters into innovation. So he believes or thinks that he is following the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, but in reality, his action is not founded upon adhering to the Sunnah. Because we know in order for an action to be accepted by Allah Azza wa Jalla, first, it's got to be sincerely performed for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla. As Allah said, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ That they were not commanded except to worship Allah and then to make the deen upon al-ikhlas, meaning to do so sincerely seeking the face of Allah Azza wa Jalla. That is the first principle. The second is as has been mentioned numerous times in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, where she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ يَمَرَنَا فَهُوَ رَدْ That the one who performs an action that we did not do, then it will be rejected. وَمَنْ أَحَدَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا هَذَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فَهُوَ رَدْ And the one who introduces a matter that we did not do, then that will be rejected. So we know that disobedience to the Prophet ﷺ can be in performing an action for which you have no dalil, no evidence for. That will take a person to the fire. Why? Because it's been known and mentioned in the great hadith of Arabad ibn Usariya radiallahu ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said wa iyyakum wa muhdathati al-umur that be aware of newly invented matters 
fa inna kulla bid'ah dalalah that indeed every bid'ah every innovation is a misguidance that is why he said earlier on in the hadith fa alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al khulafa'i al rashidin al mahdiin min ba'di and adhere to my sunnah and the sunnah of the correctly guided khulafa after me and then he warned not to enter into newly invented matters because all of them will take a person to the fire so we have a numerous ayat in which allah wa affirmed that principle that disobedience to him and to his messenger will cause that person to the enter the fire as allah said in surah an nisa wa may yasillah wa rasula wa yata'adda hudud that whoever is disobedient to allah this messenger wa yata'adda hudud and then he transgresses the boundaries between that which is lawful and that which is impermissible yudkhilhu naran that Allah Azza wa Jalla will cause that person to enter the fire khalidan fiha wa lahu adhabun muheen then Allah Azza wa Jalla will cause that person to enter the fire wa lahu adhabun and he will have a, a punishment which is muheen wa man yaksi Allah wa rasoola faqad dalla dalala muheen and the one who is disobedient to Allah this messenger faqad dalla dalala muheen that is a person who has dalla misguided and his misguidance is manifest that ayah is part of or the end of the ayah in surah al-ahzab where allah azza wa jalla said wa ma kana li mu'min wa la mu'minati idha qada allah wa rasuluhu amran an yakuna lahum al khiratu min amrihim that it is not for a believer male or female that when allah azza wa jalla or his messenger have decreed a matter that they should have any option or choice in that matter except that they submit to it and then then after that the one who is a be, uh, disobedient to Allah and his messenger that is a person who is upon manifest error so we know therefore that just as obedience to Allah and his messenger will cause a person to enter Jannah then disobedience to his messenger will and to Allah indeed will cause a person to enter into the fire and similarly the author rahimahullah he affirmed and followed his own principle that for every point of the deen there must be a dalil so after mentioning this point that for man ta'ahu dakhala al jannah that the one who is obedient to him will enter jannah wa man asahu dakhala an nar and the one who is disobedient to him will enter the fire he said wa dalilu qawluhu ta'ala and the dalil for that is the statement of allah the most high inna arsalna ilaykum rasulan shahidan alaykum kama arsalna ila fir'aun rasula that indeed we sent to you a rasul a messenger shahidan alaykum a witness against you كما أرسلنا إلى فرعون رسولا just as we sent to Fir'aun a messenger فعصى فرعون رسولا and Fir'aun عصى الرسولا he disobeyed the messenger فأخذناه أخذا وبيلا so we seized him with a painful seizing a painful torment and that I is in Surah Al-Muzammir so who did Allah عز وجل send to Fir'aun he sent Musa and his brother Harun alayhim as-salam they went to their uh, people the Israelites and to Fir'aun who had enslaved them and he ordered and established the good against Fir'aun and his people and the end result to Fir'aun as we know is that he would say to his people ma'alimtu lakum min ilahin ghayrin that i never taught you to worship a god besides me 
And he rejected the da'wah, the invitation of Musa and Harun alayhim as salam. So Allah Azza wa Jalla said, فَأَخَذْنَاهُ أَخْذًا وَبِيلًا So we seized him with a painful punishment, a painful torment as a result of his disobedience. Why did the author, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah, mention this as a delil to illustrate this point? Because he's making a, a comparison between the sending of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to this ummah and the one who obeys him will enter Jannah and the one who disobeys him will enter the fire and the comparison or the example of that is what happened to Fir'aun and to the Egyptians that Allah sent to them a messenger Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun the one who obeyed him, he would enter Jannah. And the one who disobeyed him would enter the fire. So that is the Sunnah of Allah and his creation. That when he sent to them a messenger, the one who is obedient to them, he would enter Jannah. And he would be upon guidance. And the one who disobeyed them and turned away, or the one who innovated and introduced practices that their messenger or their prophet did not establish for them, then that person would enter the fire. And that is the explanation of that statement. Wallahu wahdahu a'lam. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.